Uh, my name is Tal Kitron with Apple Roof Tutoring Services. I've been with the company for about 10 years in a few different capacities. Currently, my role is as a tutor and executive function coach, um, but I've worked with students in high school and in college and in middle school. And today, we're just going to talk about college finals, which are coming up soon, and really how to be proactive and uh, study in a very smart and efficient way for these tests. So hopefully we find some efficient or helpful tips. And then if you have questions at the end, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. Topics we're gonna cover. Number one is attitude is a really big thing. People can get down on themselves or become anxious. So creating the right attitude towards classwork and finals generally. We're gonna look at working memory, what that is, how to effectively use it. We're also gonna look at good study methods, how to improve our memory and working memory. And then test anxiety, which many of us experience at various levels of schooling and how to mitigate. So I mentioned proactive versus reactive. We wanna be proactive, right? Good study habits are a result of having the right attitude, not just coming into final exam week, but really for the whole semester. Some characteristics of a proactive student are this is a person that knows when assignments are due, knows and also has a place where that lives in their phone or computer or notebook or all three, and then plans accordingly, right? Not gonna wait till the last moment. So not procrastinating, there's gonna be time for um, editing or revision or just double checking. Proactive students will ask questions early and often. So you wanna make sure that you've done your due diligence, right? So like you've read the assignment, you've read the syllabus, you've consulted peers, if you still have questions, go ask the professor. Don't make assumptions about it if you're unsure. And professors usually, unless it's a very silly question you could have answered on your own, which is rare, professors are gonna like it if you come with questions or thoughts. Um, in that vein, we have to make sure we completely and fully understand the assignment before attacking it. Proactive students study for a test gradually, not all at once at a chunk at the end. And because of that, we usually get a satisfactory grade. A reactive student, on the other hand, and this is a lot of when we're doing EF coaching, executive function, and even tutoring, what we see. But if we're reactive, that means we're missing deadlines and hoping something's going to magically work out. Oh, I'm so sorry, if something happened, can I have an extension? We're waiting for the last minute, we don't ask for help, um, or we do, we don't ask the right questions. Reactive would be making assumptions about the assignment and just going for it instead of asking those hard questions. Uh, another characteristic would be we try to do our best-ish, but then just hope maybe the teacher won't be too harsh on this, kind of wishful thinking, and then procrastination and cramming is another big characteristic of a reactive student. So these are all things we don't want to do it, really at any level, but especially in college when we're on, out on our own, something to keep in mind that you want to avoid. And some people are like, well, I don't know how to do that. We all already know how to be proactive. You just have to visualize what are other things, maybe usually things we enjoy a lot, right? So whether that's video games or sports or cooking or music, think about activities that at some point in your life you worked hard at and think about how you did it, what you did to improve. Maybe it's just building strength via weightlifting or conditioning with exercise. And then think about how can I apply that approach, right? How can I develop routines and apply a similar approach to my classes or to midterms or to final exams, right? So we already have that kind of proactivity in ourselves. We just need to, to relate it to other things that we've succeeded at. Proactive versus reactive relates to a growth versus a fixed mindset. We wanna develop this growth mindset of if we make mistakes, which are important, we need to make mistakes, they're crucial. The growth mindset is curious. So shoot, you know, I should have, I should have started studying five days ago uh, and now I'm, I'm up against the wall. Maybe for this test, that's trouble, but for finals down the road, we can learn from that and we won't ever do that again. It's not, ugh, self-defeating, I'm so bad at this. That's a fixed mindset, which becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So as you develop your executive function skills and as you think about um, your working memory, and how you study and how you think, you really want to be curious and gentle with yourself, right? Don't, don't be judgy, don't be negative. Positive self-talk is really important. 
right? Mistakes are crucial, we learn from them. And I tell that to all my students, no matter what level we're at. Like I do a lot of SAT and ACT and PSAT prep. And a lot of students really don't like missing questions. They're afraid to miss it, but it's, it's good to miss questions. Then we learn, why do we miss it? If we see it again, how will we knock this question out next time? So here we're gonna talk acronyms and mnemonic devices. G-O-A-T stands for greatest of all time. And the G stands for, in this context, goals. A lot of students, both in high school, but also college are not setting specific goals. That could be, I wanna get straight A's, right? That's kind of a broad goal. So then you wanna make that more micro. Um, you know, I wanna get a, at least an 85 on this midterm. Uh, you know, I wanna make sure that I attend, you know, I don't miss more than one class you know, per um, course. You wanna have some safe goals and some stretch goals. But be realistic, right? So it's not going to be just, well, I need to ace every single class. That's not realistic. It's perfectionistic and it's overwhelming, right? So setting some kind of realistic benchmark goals um, and try to make it incremental. So it doesn't have to be one overarching goal. Rather, it can be some progress along the way. So setting goals and thinking about them. The O in GOAT is for organization, right? That's a big part of executive function coaching or helping students get organized, help them focus. Uh, I mentioned like for exercise, right? Creating this routine, same is true for studying. If you have this certain place where you go and that's your study spot, right? You've got this decluttered environment, you've got good lighting, you've got your pencils and your paper and your desk and all that stuff and a good chair and no distractions, that lets your brain know, okay, it's focus time. And it'll then be harder for you to break it. So you're making that pathway easier. And then building in study time to your calendar. In college, this was something that I definitely started to do where, uh, you know, I would build in both breaks in my calendar and also actual time to study because otherwise it would get lost in the mix. I'd spend too long at the dining hall or I'd go out and I'd be playing basketball and, and then all of a sudden I'd be a little bit behind the eight ball. So schedule that time, but also schedule breaks. The A in this study plan is for attention. So focusing your attention on the classwork. When you're studying for finals, you wanna remove all distractions, multitasking, usually not effective. I know some students who can listen to music and still work. I don't know many people who can have TV on and still work uh, or be like texting or, or doing other stuff on social media and still work. That's the biggest one usually is just going on airplane mode or just putting your phone aside for a while. Right, if that's the thing that's normally going to be distracting us. That being said, it's not realistic to go three straight hours without a break. It's not healthy. So allow and maybe even schedule in short breaks. But if you know that, like, if you go on a break and you start a video game and you know that's going to take longer than you'd like, you'll get sucked in, you have to force yourself not to do that. Instead, use the break to get a snack, take a short walk, splash your face with water, um, maybe, you know, Check, in, check a couple emails, text a friend or two, but make it a finite amount of time, right? 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, not longer than that. And the T is for testing, right? The big reason we're here today is about final exams. But in this case, what we're talking about is testing yourself. So like, as you review, and we're gonna talk a bit more about working memory and how to do this, but as you review notes and uh, textbooks and prior quizzes or exams, you wanna start like asking yourself questions, writing summaries, and maybe even teaching it to someone else, even if it's just to the mirror, right? Or, or to the dog. Um, ideally, if you have a study partner, we'll talk about that as well. But I think this is a, a tough thing that people don't do is they have in mind what they need, but they don't go that final route of review by testing themselves. To, to say, oh, for sure, now I know I'm going to get this on final exam day. So what this kind of boils down to is how can we encourage efficient study methods? This is what executive function coaches do, right? So I can help students with that. But, but students also really have a good sense just innately of what works and what doesn't work. It's all about building a macro system that then can be used on a smaller level to be more proactive. So it's all about organization, knowing deadlines, 
knowing yourself, thinking about just the way you are thinking. And that's what uh, metacognition, what you see at the bottom of the slide, that's what that is, thinking about the way you think. So when we're trying to memorize, it's more than just reading, right? The, the best way to memorize is you take a chunk, you kind of chew on that for a bit, and then you check it, chunk, chew, check. Uh, and then if you don't come back to something within 24 hours and again in a week, you're not going to reinforce it, right? Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm in my late 30s. There's so many things in my life that I've learned and then forgotten, right? But I even see that happening to high school students, right? It's like stuff they've learned freshman year has been pushed out of their brain because they haven't seen it in a couple of years. That's natural. That's going to happen. But when we're talking about like a, a course we're currently taking and a final exam coming up at the end of the semester, what you want to think about is what's going to be the method and the system that is best for you. That's why this is a tough presentation because it's not the same for everyone. Some people are amazing at starting a task. They can do that task initiation, no problem. And they can persist through it. But then when it comes to task completion, we struggle. Others, like for me, I, I could always start tasks. I could persist. And then just getting that finishing touch I had a little block. Right. So these are skills that we can develop and improve. But first, you have to think about where are you actually going wrong when you know, we, we don't succeed or when something not so great happens. You also got to think about the good stuff, right? So like how to improve this is we're creating links and connections across ideas. So think about when that's worked for you in the past, right? Build off kind of positive experiences as well as previous negative ones. And then again, the 24 hour review trick. So if you review something new that you've learned within 24 hours of initially learning, so like five hours, 10 hours, 15 hours later, it's much less likely you'll forget it. And that's true for just about everything, right? Locker combination, uh, vocabulary, history dates, phone numbers, math and science formulas, right? Almost everything if you just keep doing it. Um, I remember at some point I taught myself the US presidents in order. Um, and I just had to like hammer it in for a week every day or so, and then I had it down. Would I remember it now? Maybe not. But if I reinforced it a couple of times, it would come back more quickly. So you're building these patterns in your mind. We've mentioned working memory. I think this is a really important part of learning and preparing for finals. One thing that's a common misconception is that we're not supposed to remember everything. Um, my wife seems to, which is both a blessing and a curse for me, but even for people with perfect memories, it, it's, it feels like sometimes that's sacrificing in other areas. No matter what, people are going to have information leak out eventually if it's not reinforced. So for example, in SAT, ACT, I tell students, you know, you want to read maybe the first two thirds of the passage, go do some questions, and then read the end, keeping less in our mind at one time. So we can only keep so much in our head at once and so many different types. What we're talking about here is the information that's like right at the tip of our brain. And we can use this to help both understand, but also cement and retain information. The best way to do that is by forced recall, which is literally forcing ourselves or someone else forces us to think about information. Right? It's like, oh, okay, well, now it's called upon for me to answer this question or, or um, remember this date. Right? So that's why we have questions and quizzes and tests. Um, you can self-generate it by thinking, okay, I just read a paragraph. What did I just read? But then the actual physical act of writing down is really important. Right? So like we're looking at, uh, we're studying for, I don't know, geology 101. And we're looking at the textbook and the chapters, we start to zone out. That's gonna happen. Everyone's been there where you read a paragraph and then realize, oh gosh, what did I just read? Read it again. So what you wanna do sometimes is just pause and think, okay, what's the importance of this, right? Maybe write down some of the things they could test on, right? So reframe it, zoom out. You don't wanna get lost uh, deeply when you're studying for a test. And as we're building this working memory, and the foundations for test day, you need to be thinking about how do we link ideas. If we don't link ideas, we're not gonna really comprehend why they're there. 
But if we do, it's going to help us memorize each one and the overall concepts. One way to work with this is mnemonic devices. Tough word to spell and say. But like in high school, I'm sure people remember PEMDAS for order of operations, SOHCAHTOA for trig, um, I before E except after C, M comes before N, the alphabet, so that's how we know how to spell mnemonic, M-N. As a coach, I'll have, like, there's no wrong mnemonic device. So like different students, sometimes you need a song, right? Or people do well with names. So nothing is too weird or corny as long as it helps you remember. So as a coach, I'll, I'll make sure the students can explain it to me. And when they do that, when they're teaching it to me, it reinforces what they've learned. Much more likely they'll recall it on testing. And if it's your own mnemonic, mnemonic that you've invented, you're much more likely to feel good about it on testing. Just a few other little tricks, some of which I use, but like honestly, a lot of them I didn't. And I have students who really benefit and others who like different things. So these are just ideas. So you can color code your notes or you can use little sticky notes. Um, you know, one color for like something involving humans and people, one for a different color for events. Maybe we use different, something else for like a concept or a important, um, I don't know, war or something like that. For math, you could change it for one color for formula sheet, one for vocab, and then one for proofs, just as an example. The coloring, I think, will help just some people. This will help just about everyone. Reviewing our notes and then asking questions to create connections in your mind. So no matter what the subject is, these are some who, what, where, when, why, how questions that you can ask. The big key that I think most people will not do that they should is write out the answers. That's really painstaking. You don't need to write out perfect answers, but if you can at least write it enough to convince yourself, okay, I could answer this, that's how you get to the comfort zone for testing, right? A lot of this is this internal battle of what do I need to do to feel confident? I think that's really most of what this is. And then time management is, of course, key. So think about early and often how much time you have. If you know there's a final exam on Monday, but another one on Tuesday, right, you don't want to save that Tuesday exam. You don't want to wait to study until Monday, especially if maybe the teacher has office hours that you then can't get to, right, if it's too late. So you want to schedule your um, study plan. I would use like iCal or Google Calendar, everything in the phone. You, some, some coaches really like those huge uh, monthly calendars that you can write stuff up on. Some people still have planners, right, physically. So it's just a matter of knowing where it is and, and making sure that it feels like an easy, efficient, accessible way for you to get it. When we're thinking finals, make sure you consult the syllabus. So before you go asking questions, make sure that you've read the whole syllabus because it usually will say. Right, and that's something you usually get on the first day of class and people often lose it or, or just forget, but really important. And then find out what the format of the test will be. If it's not in the syllabus, make sure you know what types of questions we're seeing, how many, uh, is it gonna be multiple choice or short answer? Do I need to write an essay with a thesis? If it's a math class, do we get partial credit for doing some steps or do we need to get it all right? So those are all things you need to make sure you know and that helps with comfort and confidence. And we touched on this earlier, but study sessions can be really good or really, really bad. And I, I've, I've had both experiences. So I went to University of Illinois undergrad and then Miami for my last couple of years in Florida and then Emory for law school. And in law school, study sessions were great. I found you know, people that were similarly motivated and there wasn't you know, someone who was just kind of coasting along, letting people do the work for them. But most bright students have had experiences where someone's kind of taking advantage right, and not maybe in the group for the right reason. So maybe keep, this, keep the group small, make sure it's people you're close to and you trust, not just personally and socially, but also academically. Um, one option would be having each person research part of it to present to the group. I was always uncomfortable with that because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I felt like I should learn it all myself. I didn't really, maybe it was a lack of trust. But if in law school, when I had a really good group, I would share notes and, and vice versa and trust people 
to do part of the work for me and I would do part of it for them. If you can find a good group, that's obviously lovely. And then talking about just leading up to the exam week itself, sometimes it's a couple of weeks. Um, biggest thing is don't get sick. I mean, good and good sleep, I probably should have mentioned it before now. It's so important, right? Not only should you not cram, but if you find yourself pulling all nighter, it's almost never the right move. Even in law school, what I would do is I'd stay up till one or two. And then when I just got too tired that, you know, I wasn't really being productive, I would sleep for three, four hours even, and then wake up at six and, and start studying some more, much better than staying up the whole way through. Um, I remember my mom always saying that fish, brain food, so protein is good brain food. Don't skip breakfast, if, assuming you usually eat breakfast. Make sure you've laid out what you need for the test, right? Pens, pencil, paper, calculator, whatever else you might need. If it's in a different room than your usual class, make sure you know where you're going. And then self-affirmation, but also, of course, from a, a tutor or coach or, or friends, and also positive visualization. Both of those can really go a long way towards giving you confidence and energy for that test. This is one of the most important slides. Like just really make sure you get good sleep, right? Everything is, is better if we've got a little bit of sleep. And the last big thing we're gonna talk about is testing anxiety, which is something that a lot of people experience. It is important to remember that some anxiety is a good thing. Right, so we've got this optimal stress zone of healthy anxiety where, where you stress, where you, you feel like, geez, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit on edge. Um, you got adrenaline going. You feel like, oh man, this really matters. Right, people get it before a musical performance or a sporting event or a test. If we get to that far end of unhealthy anxiety, of like, oh gosh, what's going to happen if I don't do well? That tends to be unproductive and unhealthy. And then on the other end of the spectrum is the we don't care, which is different. That means you, that means we need to figure out what the motivation for that student is, right? So who cares? I'll wing it on test day. Generally means we're not motivated by good grades or don't really care. So got to figure out what is at the heart of that. And usually it might just be a lack of skills that make people then act like they don't care, right? As kind of a defense mechanism. I see that kind of a lot. But some anxiety is a good thing. As a coach, we can help students to develop an inner coach, right? So like before any ACT, I'll tell my student, you know, ask them if they have any questions or thoughts, let them know they can reach out. And then you're very well prepared, right? Go in, relax, confident, comfortable in yourself. You can do this. You're going to do great. And then that's what you need to be telling yourself during the test when you won't have a parent or teacher or coach or friends there, you have to kind of embrace this. So there's this panic mode you see when people are struggling. They miss a question, they're thinking, man, now what? It's really important to just jump forward to things that you are comfortable with, right? So it's, it's just this one question. Let me skip it for now. It's fine. Everyone else is struggling. If I am, try to chill out. We can do this, All right? So that inner coach, I mean, and higher self, that's something that we're developing throughout our life. And it's really something that it is can be really difficult for people who haven't dealt with that before or haven't thought that way. Beyond the inner coach, we also want to tame the inner anxiety monster, which will say negative things like, oh, you always do this. This is terrible. What if this happens? Everyone's going to be disappointed, right? All this negative self-talk. If you find that happening, the first thing is to name that. So this is Rupert. And more so just naming, here's what I'm feeling anxiety about. That, that alone can help control it. Because again, thinking about the way we're thinking, metacognition. And then we got to try to listen to that inner coach, not Rupert. So, you know, the proctor says 30, or the teacher says 30 minutes left, and we're feeling like, oh gosh, I'm behind. On the right, you're going to see what happens if you're just in that negative stress zone. Oh no, what are we doing? And that's going to lead to negative results down the road right? The, the next 30 minutes are going to be rough too, because we're panicking. But then if they say, okay, five minutes or 30 minutes left, it's like, all right, got it. Everyone else has that, heard that same message. So take a deep breath and just do what you can. That's all we can do. That's much easier said than done, but obviously the inner coach is going to make us feel better and perform better.
and this, this is kind of a person who looks a little bit angry, but this is confidence in the mirror. Um, confidence really, really does breed success. So not overconfidence, but I know what to expect. I'm well prepared, right? All that stuff is, is really crucial. So I see a couple of questions coming up here. Please feel free to put them in the Q&A. As a review of what we've talked about so far, be proactive, not reactive towards exams. That means even now, right? Think about down the road, what you've got in scheduled break time and study time. We said G-O-A-T, so goals, organization, um, and the A and the T, testing, and whatever A was. Uh, we'll come back to that. Um, but it was all about just having this structured plan, right? I think A was attention to detail. We have to just make sure that we are uh, organized and that you've got everything from the syllabus, especially kind of in your mind. So we'll go back and look at GOAT as needed. Effective memorization methods, both working memory and otherwise. We talked about the support you need during exam week. So scheduling and break time, right? Getting good rest, don't overextend. We want to acknowledge how testing anxiety can affect performance both, both negatively and positively. So a little bit of anxiety is okay. And then as a whole, we're trying to create this positive visualization, positive outlook towards the exams, which again, easier said than done if you've got some negative mindsets, um, but we want to create this growth mindset as the ultimate goal. And as I said, it's not, not taking the whole hour today. So that's pretty much it. I want to open this up for questions. And we're also going to um, put a poll in the uh, just up on screen here for you guys to answer. What Apple Ruth offers is both in-school tutoring, um, test prep. What will mostly apply for you guys if you're in college or your parents of college students will be the EF coaching. And that's like 30 minute sessions once or twice a week to help people really develop these skills we're talking about. Organization, planning, prioritizing, time management, and then task persistence. If you are interested in that, you can call the number below and just schedule a diagnostic or 15 minute time to talk free of charge. The cool thing about EF coaching is the mind print exam, which is like a mock test for your mind. So we start with that, then do a diagnostic um, to look at how, what are some ways we can build a system to make you more efficient and more organized. So hopefully we've learned some stuff about just how to prepare for finals and the mentality to keep. I'm gonna open it up to questions for at least a few minutes and see if we've got, please feel free to put those in the Q&A. Any and of course, if you feel like you've gotten what you need and you've gotten some good tips, with, um, I'm not gonna keep you here. We're gonna close this out pretty soon. I say my last message is make sure you get good sleep before your finals. That's the number one thing. All right, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, please feel free to reach out to Apple Ruth if they do come up. Really appreciate y'all joining tonight. and hope you have a great rest of the evening. <laughs>